Hello everyone, um, my name is Ana Mafalda uh, and I would like to first of all thank to the board of the European Digital Week for the invitation to be recording this conference and speaking about a little bit about virtual museum of fine arts of the University of Lisbon. First, I would like to give some introduction about this project. Um, this was granted from the University of Lisbon, which was a competition for students to bring projects for innovation, uh, just for, for students with supervision of one or two teachers, or professors, um, but it was mainly by students. And I got this idea since I was a student from fine arts. At the time I was doing, I was beginning my master's degree there uh, on conservation of contemporary art. And I thought it was a good opportunity to develop a little bit more what was done. And what was done was the drawing collection was uh, online. Um, and that, that was all. It was a simple design outlook of the website, but it, it didn't have much interaction. People would go there as an inventory database, not, not more than that. And uh, so from this competition, I spoke with some colleagues that I met in different occasions from different backgrounds. And I thought that we would, good, would, would be a great opportunity to, to put some more collections and do something about the, the website that it was done. This, this image that you're looking at it um, is the, the, the one that is up online right now. Uh, the, the, the upside the, then has my name and the university logo. So giving this opportunity, we got the, the grant which was not that much money, but it could help my colleagues a little bit. And we got the new camera to do what you're gonna see. And, and that was, was all. Uh, it was a great opportunity to develop a little bit more. And the presidency at the time was very up to it. It was, uh, as you, we all have the same problem with resources institutional resources this would would be some kind of solution so first of all i was the manager then i had a team to coordinate everything and i would like to introduce them to you so this is my colleagues first programming we needed someone that understands about programming and uh, lots of it so people from fine arts more from multimedia, which is the last one, Gonzalo knows a little bit about programming, but we needed someone who really got into uh, PHP and a lot of database in, in insightful information and John was, was great with it. Then we had Paulo, which was responsible for the web design and a lot of the communications part. So how can we get uh, more information? How can we expose it? And the last one was the interface, the responsible user interface, which was consulted. So we had a, a colleague, the first, the first one is from Institute Superior Technic, which is programming and engineering school. It's the main one in the University of Lisbon. Then we have uh, Paulo, which was from the uh, letters uh, university which which is language and communication and Gonzalo was from fine arts but at the time he went to another school to study user interface so I had different colleagues from different parts of the same university which was a very interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary team which was which was great uh, they accepted to participate there we thought that it was a great idea that's why they <laughs> Accept it to be part of it. So next thing was practical issues. For me, as the coordinator of all this and um, responsible for the project, I needed to get will from my colleagues and from institution that would be related to 
other points that I'll be mentioning here. So how can I get them to be interested and uh, motivated to do the things that we had to do? That was very important to manage. Then, means and resources. This was not easy. We first started with the project with direction to painting and then there was a lot of complications that we got and we managed to change a little bit of it for engraving. That was the only way that we could do the project because otherwise we had to give up on it. And a lot of people told me to give, give up on it with all the problems, but I thought that it was worth a fight. The other thing was financing. Um, how can we go around with a lot of financial problems? And I'm from Portugal. And um, so we all know where the limitations uh, basically are. And education is, is certainly, certainly one that is more a victim. And uh, we had to manage to how can I help my colleagues you know, people work with something given back and not just the project. Although they were very willing with the project, I needed to give them something back and how we can manage that. And other things were, we didn't get everything uh, from our proposal, financial proposal, but though we could do what we, we intended to with, with, with what they, they got us. So, all these big, big problems, a lot of problems. It, um, I think that managing is part of, is, is everything about getting solutions to problems. That's, that's the work of someone that manages anything. And the results that was interesting about this project is that expectations are very different from the results, the, the reality of the results that we have. And I was very young when I, got into managing this project and growing up with this kind of um, view on these issues is very interesting as we get stuck into those expectations that we don't get it and how can we turn around and make something about it and I think the results are pretty good though so going into I'm going to show you the visual museum talk about it while I'll show you and then We'll talk about it in the perspectives that we have nowadays with all this pandemic and new situations that I think is worth of reflection. So here's the website. It's right now is up. You can um, search on Google Visual Museum Fine Arts or Museo Virtual Belas Arts, which is in Portuguese. And here are the main page with some details of different artworks that are exposed inside the institution, the corridors and the, the spaces. This is a detail of engraving. And I think this is a detail from drawing, which are not exposed, um, but they are here reproduced in uh, digitally reproduced in this database. So, the first page is about what was done, a little website with drawing, which was already very good in, in 2009. And in 2013, I was 22 years old and when we started this and I got the team and we got it around from painting to engraving. And what, what is the future that we we're looking for, like promoting this practice in international and national levels of institutions and fine, not only fine arts, but different. I started with university collections, but I think it would be worth to do any kind of um, collection. So I'll go with the first example that will be here of engraving that was, the drawing was already there. So we, I'm gonna show you afterwards how we kept the, the design, the web design. So we have all this information, which is kind of an inventory. It's kind of a database that you have a PDF that will be 
produced automatically. I don't know. Eh. Uh, if you want to print it or if you want to save it. But going back to this image, so you can click on it, you can have some details. Uh, the photos were done by, by myself, which one of <laughs> an extra responsibility that I had um, was registering, recording the, uh, virtually these engravings. With the help of the responsible, she worked with me every time. First of all, I couldn't get by myself in the, in the, in the facilities. And then he, she would help me how to manage hard works because a lot of conservation know this, but other general public don't know. It's there are different ways to manage to get grab of different kind of objects, and I think it's very important to have someone that understands about it. And she would work with me with this. So this is um, you have the authorship as well. I'm sorry. It's like a biography about him. Uh, which is kind of a, a database that was constructed and is pretty good. So I'm going to show you. This is already very nice. And one thing that I would love the institution to do is to go further and do the painting collection that you do some some discussions, some problems with a student, a post PhD student or something. Uh, didn't got the chance to be online and I think you should have the chance to be online as well as sculpture. As sculpture we have a great uh, plaster c collection in the institution as well w which is a very big collection. Uh, when you look at Fine Arts of Lisbon it's very big with different kind of objects, nature of objects and I think it would be worth to put everything online like this which is pretty simple. In the drawing it's the same thing. As you can see, the web design is the same. You can click, you can, you can see some details. But what we got different here is going back to the main page. You don't, didn't need, you, you could go from one to another place. Is the virtual tour. And I think that this part of the project got me a little bit, five years after, got me reflecting on his importance and I'm going to speak a little about it. Virtual tour. You can literally walk. This is the Fine Arts of Lisbon. This is the main entrance. This public space is in Chiado. Um, it's in the heart of the city. You can walk by scrolling. You can walk inside. And when you walk inside, you got information from the places that you, if you, if you need something in, in particular, or you have information about the, the collection that is exposed. And I told you that was some collection. So we're gonna walk a little bit here. This on the left is a presidency. As you can see, we're going. This is some copies of the Parthenon that we have. And we got all this information so people can look at it uh, a little bit. The idea was, it still is, and I already talked with uh, everybody that I could about this. People could click on it and go to the sculpture collection. And I've tried it, uh, but still have some problems about the inventory. But I hope that I still continue and I accepted the invitation to come here and speak today about this, to still try to to get the sensitivity of people so they can push this project and do it because it's important. And I think that not only our institution, but a different institution should do it. And walking here, another one. So this can be updated. If things change, it can be updated. And this was Gonzalo part, which is the last one, the user interface. He got this idea. The first one was digital. We get the, the institution digital, but then we start um, rethinking about it. What if we record it, we get into frames and we put it here by scrolling. And it worked very well. And 
what I was thinking about, this is the National Academy of Fine Arts, which is inside the, the, the School of Fine Arts of the University of Lisbon. You can walk back. And what I thought about with all this pandemic situation is the importance of being able to visit something that we cannot access. One of, I'll, I'll get there in one minute, just one small detail about our digital virtual tour is that we left the stairs. You can walk the stairs. And this is a detail because as you can see, we have some tiles in, this, in it on the walls. And we thought that for me, which is my background, my background is uh, art and heritage. I thought it would be very important to, to leave it here. And some installation from colleagues, which can, you can see a lot of different action uh, activities around the, the university by going around this. So I'll be here. And with all this coronavirus, uh, this pandemic, I got a little bit of reflection on it we we are we were at home now we are trying to um trying to get our hands in this new lifestyle and paradigm that we are living in but still we were at home we were in quarantine almost everybody in the world was at at the same time in quarantine and this kind of effects because everything became virtual I mean, we were working from home. We had to reinvent ourselves, not only for working, but socially. And how can we rethink about all this? What kind of activities can we do? At, at the time, I uh, shared the virtual museum, I reshared the virtual museum on Facebook and other places, and people got along with it. And, a lot of likes and a lot of comments. Oh, this is great. We can see the institution, even though we are at home and we can, you know, we, we miss it and we got a little bit in, of joy by walking through it and remembering and talking. And I, I even have uh, emails from people saying, I got with my colleagues doing virtual and laughing a little bit, telling stories. So they were at the same time doing the virtual tour and at the same time doing probably Zoom or something. And they were talking about things that happened there at the school. So you got a little new opportunities for all this. And what I mean is we got to rethink about all this, not in a negative. Of course, people wouldn't go to school and I'm talking about these collections. People will not see these collections. People will, will not interact. But I think this is new opportunity. So we will think about and value the digital and, and virtual. So we have to overcome limitations. So how can I replace? How can I rethink this? How can I go around with this? And I, I think this is the future. So what can we do? We are not talking about replacing uh, the, the real objects. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm from art and her heritage. I will, I will never have a position like that, but I think that the, the real objects and the virtual representations and interactions could be hand with hand, you know, holding hands and walking together on all these new uh, perspectives. So inventory, it will be interesting to, I'm going to put it all here. The first of all, inventory. I think that a lot of institutions, and I'm not the only one, uh, since I got my PhD, a lot of different colleagues are going to deliver their PhD. Uh, and they said that they ask for documents and other information. And institutions uh, got the first time to record it digitally because they were answering to things because people couldn't go to the institution. And so it became a, a digital inventory for kind of different collections around institutions. And the thing is, and I always said this from 2012, I think was my first uh, paper about this virtual museum, the importance of getting the digital is 
also for conservation purposes. And institutions have the responsibility for conservation and they should think and go more over the digital um, aspects of it because it's very important to know the conditions that they are having at the time. Different media and here I was thinking about when I, I put it here different media. You saw the inventory and we could just left the website with that. But we thought that the virtual tour would have an extra with it since it had a lot of history. It was a, a convent. It was a religious, a religious place uh, from I think 15th century. So it has a lot of history and that giving the virtual tour would, would be very important and to show the artworks that are exposed in the corridors. So different kind of media and we could talk about simple photos from three, 360 degrees photos from different uh, interactions and what we saw most of all during the pandemic was big institutions doing this was small clips talking about art uh, objects i won't say artworks but objects different objects from collections they would do like five minutes seven minutes which is perfect for the intention attention of people and it worked very well and they were getting information out still with closed doors, institutional closed doors, and we're putting outputs and they were putting clips all around YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and they were getting information on it. And I think that's this kind of interaction is the future. The virtual and the digital is the future for, for a lot of different aspects, conservation, education, outputs, culture, society i mean all this is very very important so i think that i got a little bit of different subjects here so to discuss and to end this clip and this <laughs> this conference from home virtually i would like to acknowledge my team my colleagues but they were a great great i mean they were really uh, real helpful and uh, interested in it was great to work with them and the institution of course the institution of fine arts of lisbon as well so thank you so much for the for listening and i'm right now up for your questions thank you so much <laughs>